What's going on YouTube? GSN right here. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the iOS 12.3.1, 12.3, 12.2, all the way down to 12.1.3 jailbreak status. Also, we're going to talk about Houdini and whether we can build a Houdini-like or even Houdini for 12.1.3 and newer. And of course, I'm going to tell you which versions are okay to stay on in terms of jailbreaking. So just a little bit of a recap since it's been a while since I made a video like this. The uh, iOS 12.3.1 and 12.3 are currently signed with 12.4 in beta. Now this is actually pretty bad news because 12.3 and 12.3.1 currently have no public exploits. So the idea of a jailbreak for 12.3 or 12.3.1 in the foreseeable future is definitely out of the window. So we have to wait quite a while for 12.3 and 12.3.1 to be jailbroken. But for the 12.2, 12.1.4 and 12.1.3, the situation is a bit different. So you probably know that the iOS 12.3 does patch quite a lot of things and the security contents page posted by Apple back on May 13 contains quite a lot of information about what exactly is being patched. A series of the bugs being patched in here belong to Danny who posted his research, if you remember I made a video on this, called lockdown playground in here and this one actually works on 12.2 and below. So the iOS 12.1.3 and 12.1.4 including the 12.2 in this case are actually quite fine. There is this vulnerability series in here and they all been released by Danny so it's publicly available. Everybody can do whatever they want with it including making a jailbreak or a Houdini like program. We're going to talk about Houdini in a second but anyways this is actually quite powerful and it does allow you to run a few commands. If you remember I made a video on it and it's actually quite good that's why I keep on mentioning it and it's actually the most powerful thing we have for the moment in terms of jailbreaking and vulnerabilities that we can use for such things. But as powerful as this project is and the vulnerabilities behind it, it's not a kernel exploit and it doesn't provide TFP0 or the kernel task port, so we cannot read or write to the kernel memory, which is unfortunately necessary if we want to do a jailbreak in the traditional jailbreak style, which of course requires patches for sandboxing and for your GID, EOID and so on. So these are unfortunately necessary and cannot be done with this in here. But what it can do is actually quite useful. Now a lot of people ask me about the Houdini project and for a good reason because you probably saw in the security contents of the iOS 12.2, of the iOS 12.3 and even on the iOS 12.1.4 and 12.1.3 that there were many sandbox escapes being patched and of course the Houdini application can indeed use a sandbox escape to do some light modifications to the system. Apple devices do have this um, idea of a sandbox where applications are not able to read or write resources they're not supposed to have and everything is performed on an entitlement base which is basically I give you an entitlement so that you can read or write to a particular path but it's really only that thing and only in a specific condition so the sandbox escape that we talked too much about and the vulnerabilities you see here that are advertised as sandbox bypasses and so on or sandbox escapes basically allow you to do this kind of modifications to read and write the particular paths that you wouldn't be able to do normally. So a Houdini-like application would definitely benefit from having a sandbox escape since it would be able to do modifications to some plist files or property list files which contain configurations. So that way you would theoretically be able to change the carrier name or you know a lock screen sound or a camera shutter sound and stuff like that and you would be able to do so because you have access to a specific path which contains that file. But it's not a jailbreak and it will never be a jailbreak. You wouldn't be able to install tweaks with the real meaning of them. Now just a PSA, Abraham Masri doesn't work on Houdini anymore. He just made a project open source so everything is in here. So if anybody wants to update the project they can do so with new vulnerabilities but you shouldn't expect Abraham Masri to update the Houdini application. Now can we use Danny's lockdown playground to do this or to at least create something similar? Well, probably. It does give you some sort of uh, control over the system, but it's very limited and it's still not a kernel exploit. Houdini used to use kernel exploits in order to achieve 
what it did, so right from the bat it had more privileges than the Lockdown Playground we have in here. And of course the Houdini application didn't have, back on the iOS 10, any problems with remounting the file system, which we now have and we need a proper kernel exploit and possibly even some adjustments to the um, method that we use right now, developed by Pound Own and Sam Bigner, and that combined with the fact that we do not have TFP0, probably a Houdini application for the iOS 12.1.3 and newer will not be feasible in terms of building it before a jailbreak. But yeah, we do have these vulnerabilities in here and they can definitely be used, but not on 12.3 and not on 12.3.1. So definitely do not update to these. These two versions in here and the upcoming 12.4 are definitely very bad ideas if you're trying to jailbreak. But yeah, this is it about the Houdini. I got this question on Twitter. Somebody asked me, well, now we can run various commands. We have sandbox escapes and so on. Can we do a Houdini-like application or can we update Houdini? It's unfortunately not that easy, but we still have vulnerabilities that can theoretically be used for such thing, although a little bit more limited since we do not have any kernel vulnerability and those are usually the core of any jailbreak or any Houdini-like application. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys, thank you for watching. Do not forget, do not update the 12.3.1. I am Geosnow and till next time, peace out.